Hello! Welcome to Using the Quadratic Vertex Method. In this slide series I'm going to show you an easier way of solving quadratic functions. My name is Mike Callahan. I'm a STEM educator. It turns out that if you know the vertex of a quadratic function and something called the A coefficient, you can find the roots. So let's see how this works by looking at the three forms of quadratics. They're called the vertex form, the standard form, and the factored form. We'll start with the vertex form, and that looks like f of x equals a times the quantity x minus h squared plus k. The nice thing about this form is it gives you the vertex. The vertex is going to be at h comma k. The coefficients, a is determines the width of the parabola, h is the horizontal dimension or the x value of the vertex. This is called the axis of symmetry and you'll see why in just the next slide. Notice the negative sign is not included with the h and k is the vertical dimension or the y value of the vertex. It's time to introduce what I call the vertex root formula. If you're given a quadratic in vertex form, the solution for the roots is simply x equals h plus or minus the square root of minus k over a. So the offset turns out it's equal to the square root of negative k divided by a. Notice for a real solution k and a must have opposite signs. And you can also see that this equation is pretty straightforward. Very simple to memorize and we're going to see it's very easy to use. But let's look at what this equation says. It says the roots of any quadratic can be quickly found if you know the vertex. So here is a diagram, a graph, of a standard quadratic function. You can see the vertex is at h comma k. Notice in this case k is negative. We have our axis of symmetry and we have our offset. So the roots are a fixed distance which is the square root of negative k over a from h. And again, this is true for all parabolas, not just the ones in vertex form. Let's run through a simple example. We want to find the roots of 2 times the quantity of x minus 5 squared minus 8. Set it equal to 0. We know that a is equal to 2. h is equal to 5. Again, notice the negative sign did not get translated and k is equal to negative 8. In this case the negative sign did get translated. That's another thing you have to be careful with. The vertex is 5 and minus 8. Plugging it into our vertex root equation we have 5 plus or minus the square root of negative negative 8 divided by 2 well that's 5 plus or minus the square root of 4 which is equal to 5 plus or minus 2. So our x values are x equals 3 or x equals 7. See how simple that was? Let's check it. And I'm not going to go through the check. I'm going to leave it up here and you can see that indeed the math checks out. Both the roots when you plug them in turn out to be 0. Unfortunately, most of the time we are given a quadratic function, it's not in vertex form. It's in what's called standard form. And that looks like f of x equals some coefficient a, x squared, plus bx plus c. 
This is the way most of the time you will see a quadratic function expressed. So we need a method for determining the vertex of a quadratic in standard form. Once we know the vertex, we can use that vertex root equation to find the roots. So here is the vertex method for the standard form. The formula are h equals minus b over 2a, k equals c minus a h squared, and the old vertex root equation we have developed earlier, x equals h plus or minus the square root of minus k over a. So using the vertex method for standard form, all you have to do is take a and b and calculate h, then a, c, and h and calculate k, and notice the vertex is at h, k. Again, this is useful information many times. Now we have a, h, and k. We can find x. And I believe this will be much easier than using the full-blown quadratic formula. So let's look at a simple example involving a quadratic in standard form. So we set x squared plus 6x minus 16 equal to 0. We want the vertex, so we're solving for h and k using a equals 1, b equals 6, c equals negative 16. h, or the axis of symmetry, is at negative 6 divided by 2 times 1 or negative 3. k is minus 16 minus 1 times negative 3 squared. That's negative 16 minus 9 or negative 25. Quite often k will be negative. Our vertex is at minus 3 and negative 25. Using this information along with a in the vertex root equation we have x equals negative 3 plus or minus the square root of negative, negative 25 divided by 1. The negatives cancel out, so we have negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 25, which equals negative 3 plus or minus 5. Therefore, x equals negative 8, or x equals 2. Let's get a little tougher example. Find the roots of 2 x squared plus 3x minus 5. Solving for h and k using a equals 2, b equals 3, c equals minus 5. We solve for h and we end up with negative 3 divided by 2 times 2, which is negative 3 fourths. And we're going to leave it to be a fraction. k is going to be negative 5 minus 2 times 9 over 16. That's negative 5 minus 9 over 8, or negative 49 over 8. And we're going to leave that as an improper fraction. However, if we turn it into a mixed number, we'll see that the vertex is negative 3 fourths and negative 6 and 1 eighth. Let's solve for x using the vertex root equation. So we have negative 3 fourths plus or minus the square root of negative negative 49 divided by 2 times 8, or negative 3 fourths plus or minus the square root of 49 over 16, and that's going to be negative 3 fourths plus or minus 7 fourths. If you do the arithmetic, you're going to find out that x is equal to negative 2 and a half, or x is equal to 1. So while it was a little harder, it still really wasn't too tough. So far, a has been positive. What if a is negative? Well, that implies that the parabola is, opens downward and that it is upside down. So let's take an example there. Negative 1 half x squared plus 6x plus 32. Solving for h and k using a equal negative 1 half, b equals 6, c equals 32 h is going to be negative 6 divided by 2 times negative 1 half. Well, the 2 and the negative 1 half will yield a negative 1, and so we have a negative and a negative. They'll cancel out, and we end up with just 6. k is 32 minus 
negative one half times six squared. That's thirty-two plus the negatives cancel it out again. One half times thirty-six. So that's thirty-two plus eighteen or fifty. So our vertex is at six and fifty. Using this information in the vertex root formula, we end up with six plus or minus the square root of negative 50 over negative 1 half. Negatives cancel, we end up with 6 plus or minus the square root of 100, or 6 plus or minus 10. x is negative 4, or x is 16. It's time for an example showing the complex math. Let's find the roots of 3 x squared plus 12 x plus 18. Solving for h and k using a equals 3, b equals 12, c equals 18. h yields negative 12 divided by 2 times 3. That's equal to negative 12 divided by 6, or negative 2. k is 18 minus 3 times 2 squared, or 18 minus 3 times 4, 18 minus 12, and that's equal to 6. Our vertex is at negative 2, 6. Since k and a are the same sign, we are going to have a complex solution. Solving for x using the vertex root formula, we have negative 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 6 divided by 3. So negative 2, notice that's the real part, plus or minus the square root of negative 2, pulling the square root of negative 1 out and making it i, we have negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 2 times i. So x equals negative 2 minus the square root of 2i, or x equals minus 2 plus the square root of 2i. So you can see, even complex arithmetic solutions really are not too difficult. So here it is, the vertex method for finding quadratic roots. We have seen that with these three formulae, the vertex method of solving quadratic equation works for both forms of quadratic equations, the vertex and the standard. The nice thing about the vertex method is that it shows the symmetry of the solutions and it keeps the arithmetic to a minimum and it also gives you the vertex which again is useful information. Quite often when a student is told to find the roots they're also told to find the vertex. There is no guessing as in the factoring method and the arithmetic is simpler than completing the square or using the quadratic formula. And I think these three formulae are easy to memorize. Most of us have already memorized the first one, so we just have those other two, and they're quite straightforward. Now, there's a third form. It's called the factored form of the quadratic function. So we're going to look at it just to complete our survey of quadratic functions. The goal of the factoring method, though, is to convert the standard method into that above form. And you can see the roots are simply x equals r1 and x equals r2. Again, the negative sign is not included. Notice that a, in this case, has no effect on the roots, but it does affect k. So we are given the roots, so that really is not a problem if you're given a quadratic function in the factored form, but you still might want to know the vertex. So let's develop some equations to do that. Here is the vertex method for factored form. Basically two equations. The axis of symmetry is just the mean of the two roots. k is equal to the negative of the width of the parabola, that's the a coefficient, 
times that offset, which we labeled D earlier, that's just between the root and the axis of symmetry squared. And to find K, you can use either root. And the roots are given to you. So the vertex, of course, is at H comma K. So let's look at a simple example. We want to find the vertex of 2 times the quantity x plus 1 and x minus 5. Again, we're given the roots. The roots are just x equals minus 1 and x equals 5. Solving for h and k, h is just going to be minus 1 plus 5 divided by 2. That's 4 divided by 2, or 2, the mean between minus 1 and 5. k is minus 2 times the quantity, 5 minus 2 squared, so that's minus 2 times 3 squared, or minus 2 times 9, or minus 18. So the vertex is at 2 minus 18. So here's a summary of the formulae that we have developed. You can see for the vertex form, h and k are given to us, and the root is the vertex root equation. The standard form, we have an equation for h, an equation for k, and we can use that vertex root equation. For factored form, h is just the mean of the roots, k, a very simple equation, and the roots are given to us. So we have learned that the key to understanding quadratic functions is to know where the vertex is and how this relates to the roots. The formula for finding the vertex was given for all three types of quadratics, the vertex form, standard form, and factored form. Once you have the vertex, the roots are easy to calculate and the vertex in the standard form by using the vertex root equation. And of course, the vertex is easy to calculate from the roots in the factored form. The vertex shows the axis of symmetry and where the function is a maximum if a is negative or a minimum if a is positive. Now if you want to see how these formulae were derived, please watch the longer slide show the quadratic vertex method. In any case, I hope you enjoyed this little slideshow. I hope you will find the quadratic vertex method an uh, easier way of solving quadratic equations.